If you own a computer that you can carry around, fold shut, and place on your lap while working, you're most likely familiar with the word laptop. Today we use the word casually, and it feels so natural that most people don't stop to think about where the term came from. But like many words in technology, laptop has an interesting story tied to both its design and its function. So why is it called a laptop? To answer that, we need to look at the history of portable computers, the way the word evolved, and how language adapts to the tools we create. Let's explore right here on History of Simple Things. The story begins with the concept of portability in computing. In the early days of computers, machines were enormous, sometimes taking up entire rooms. These devices weren't something you could just pick up and carry to the coffee shop. As technology advanced, engineers started to dream of creating personal computers that people could move from place to place. By the late 1970s and early 1980s, companies began producing what they called portable computers. But if you looked at one of these early portables, you'd probably laugh at the name. They were bulky, heavy, and shaped more like a sewing machine case than anything you'd want to rest on your lap. Still, these machines marked the beginning of a new idea, that computing didn't have to be tied to a desk. The term laptop didn't immediately exist. At first, these machines were referred to as notebooks or simply portable computers. The word notebook came from their design resembling a closed binder or paper notebook when folded shut. But as the design evolved, engineers wanted to create computers that were not only portable, but also small enough to rest comfortably on a person's lap. This gave rise to the word laptop, which combines lap, referring to the part of your body formed when sitting down, and top, meaning the device sits on top of it. The word is incredibly straightforward, literally describing how the device is meant to be used. The first widely recognized laptop computers appeared in the 1980s. One famous example was the Grid Compass, introduced in 1982. It had a clamshell design, meaning the screen folded down onto the keyboard, a format still used by laptops today. While the Grid Compass was groundbreaking, it was also extremely expensive and mainly used by professionals like NASA astronauts. Still, the design captured the essence of what we now think of as a laptop. It was portable, it folded shut, and it could be placed on a person's lap while working. Soon after, other companies began adopting similar designs and the word laptop became more common in everyday language. Interestingly, even though the term laptop implies that the computer is meant to be used on your lap, most manufacturers today actually discourage it. If you've ever looked at the safety instructions for a modern laptop, you'll probably notice warnings advising against placing it directly on your lap for extended periods. This is because laptops generate heat and prolonged contact can be uncomfortable or even harmful. There have even been medical cases where people developed skin irritation from keeping a hot laptop on their thighs for too long. Despite this, the name stuck. It's not about strict practicality anymore. It's about the image the word conveys, that this is a personal mobile computer designed to be taken anywhere. The rise of the laptop also reflects a shift in how we work and live. In the 1990s and early 2000s, laptops became more affordable and started replacing desktop computers in homes, offices, and schools. People no longer had to sit in one place to access the digital world. The word laptop became symbolic of freedom, flexibility, and convenience. You could check emails on the couch, finish a report on a train, 
or watch a movie in bed. All things that were impossible with the stationary desktops of the past. The simplicity of the word laptop captured this spirit perfectly, and that's why it endured. Another fascinating angle is how laptop competes with the term notebook. In fact, many companies prefer to use notebook when marketing their devices. You'll see labels like notebook PC or ultrabook. This is because notebook suggests thinness, elegance, and portability without implying that the device should literally be used on your lap. However, for most consumers, laptop remains the dominant word. It's easier to say it feels familiar, and it directly paints a picture of how the device can be used. Once a word becomes ingrained in everyday speech, it's very hard to replace, even if alternatives exist. When we think about it, the name laptop is a great example of how language evolves around technology. Unlike more abstract names like Google or Apple, which don't directly describe what the product is, laptop is purely descriptive. It's a compound word that combines two very simple English words, lap and top, to create a new meaning. This type of word formation is common in technology, where functionality often inspires the name. The mouse, the keyboard, the desktop, all of these are named after the objects or ideas they resemble. The laptop follows the same pattern, and that's one of the reasons the name feels so natural. Today, laptops are so common that we rarely think about the origin of the word. But the name tells a story of design, innovation, and how technology becomes part of everyday life. It reminds us of a time when portability was a new and exciting idea in computing, and the notion of putting a powerful computer on your lap felt revolutionary. Even though our laptops today are thinner, faster, and far more advanced than their 1980s ancestors, the name has endured because it captures the essence of what these devices were meant to do. So why is it called a laptop? Simply because it was designed to sit on your lap. The name may sound obvious, but it reflects a major leap in the history of computing. A shift from giant, immovable machines to lightweight personal devices we could carry anywhere. It's a reminder of how words and inventions evolve together, shaping not only how we use technology, but also how we talk about it. And even though we might use our laptops more often on desks, tables, or even standing desks than on our laps, the name still sticks as a symbol of personal portable computing. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.